Hello everybody and welcome back to Checkpoint Radio. My name is James, this is episode 11 and joining me as always, the rest of the squad, Ben, Charlie and Connor. We've got quite an interesting episode coming out. We'll be fantasising about our dream video game studios and building our perfect publishing house. <laughs> but um, I'll let Connor tell us more about that later on. Firstly though, how are we all doing lads? Ben, you okay? I'm very good, thank you mate. I've had a week off work and it's been absolute bliss. However, back to work tomorrow. And I'm on the early, which sucks, <laughs> but been fine. I'll keep it short, but I've basically completed another game that I never, ever, ever thought I'd complete. Dark Souls, the first wow. one. Well Ooh, done. Did you complete it? Yeah, completed the first Dark Souls. Yeah. Awesome. Joe, you know I actually, I really enjoyed, because I watched your whole live stream, you played for that, that sure. pretty much all of that game. I loved it mm. and I was really enjoying it because I've... Yeah, it was... Mm. Well, I was I was just, I'm a big, big fan of Elden Ring, big fan of Sekiro, big fan of Bloodborne, but I've never actually played the original Souls yeah. trilogy. Yeah, same same here. I haven't completed Sekiro. I've played Elden Ring, but I completed Bloodborne. So mm. definitely have love there, but yeah, never experienced the uh, you, where it all you, started. Are you going to do two, three, and then sort of carry on from there? Yeah, so I was going nice. to do, well, obviously I've completed Bloodborne and it's not on PC, so I'm yeah. going to skip that. But once I've done one, two, and three, I'll do Sekiro, and then I'll do Elden Ring. So I'll come back nice. to you all in seven years <laughs> when I've finally done them all. When you're finally nice. done. That's quite an achievement, to be fair. I mean, those games are not short, and on top of that, they are extremely challenging. So yeah. fair play, cool man. Of applause word. for Ben. Well yeah. done. Yeah. First one ticked off the list, rest yeah. of them to come. Awesome, dude. Sweet. Uh, Connor, how you been, mate? Oh, yeah, I've been good. Um, so I've... Session Silo, which is on Apple TV in like oh, two sittings. It's so good. It's, it's really good. And I'm hyped for season two when it's just mm. been confirmed. So, And then I've jumped back into Disco Elysium. So I'm going to finish oh, that off. Excellent awesome, man. Choice. Well done, yeah. Have you great game. Like failed many times? Oh, yeah. I've just uh, I just tried to arrest a dude in like the cafe and he, someone just shot me out of nowhere and just like oh, no. <laughs> took me back like 15 minutes where I hadn't saved. I was oh. like, oh, God. Oh, I, the cool. first time I tried doing it, I like just went insane my guy mm. just like lost his mental mm. and yeah game over do, do you know early on where you go and try and get your jacket and you have to jump over that rail yeah yeah i rolled a poor dice roll and he just like fell to his death or like, he had a, <laughs> or he, uh, no no he had a panic attack had a heart attack and just died like because he, he didn't want to jump over like a little guardrail yeah yeah, that came million and one possibilities you die of a heart attack mm. that came nice. incredible so that's what i've been up to Sweet. Nice. Uh, Sounds Charlie, good. what about you, mate? You good? I'm all good. Uh, not done a lot, really. <laughs> just, just work. Do you know uh, what? I'm actually going to stop asking you every week because you say that every time. <laughs> yeah. Do yeah, something. Just, just Fill us in. Last week's. <laughs> uh, no, we played Exo Primal. That oh, was yeah. good. I oh, enjoyed yeah. that. Yeah, that was really fun, actually. Really enjoyed um, that game. Yeah. Just quite a cool premise. Uh, be keen to play more of that so we're looking to like stream at least once a week from now on i think aren't we mm. i think that's yeah, yeah. Like yeah. streaming yeah so yeah yeah if you, if you click click the links in the description you can follow us on everything pretty much youtube twitch and obviously all the socials so yeah we'll be posting when we stream and hopefully we'll be able to stream a bit more often so that'd be cool mm. yeah. other than that not really played a great deal but a little bit more red dead because i'm playing that through again nice. very nice yeah. can't go wrong with that game no nah. What about you, James? Uh, I've not really been up to much. I've had a pretty full-on week with work, so I've just been kind of trying to switch off a little bit over the weekend, relax. Um, weather yesterday was crap, but today has been nice and sunny, so I went in the sea this morning for a nice little cold dip, Ooh. which is something I've been doing lately, which I've been actually really enjoying. And yeah, it's, it's good. I've, I mean, so, like sometimes you hear people talk about these weird little health things they go on, and you think, you fucking pretentious dickhead. Like, why are you <laughs> telling me about it? I don't care about this. But I've really enjoyed it. You know, I've lived by the sea my whole life. I go in the sea every summer. But um, yeah, the early morning cold dip, definitely a great way to start the day. Mm. Sort of gets you, in a, gets you in a good mood, shocks your body into working, doing stuff. So Yeah, yeah and it has fun. all those health benefits, doesn't it? Well, supposedly. But um, yeah, yeah I've, I've been enjoying it. It's off. been cool. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, yeah, game-wise, I've not really been playing too much. I, mean, obviously <coughs> I said last time I've been Getting in the gym off, but we'll leave <laughs> <Yeah>. it. <laughs> <laughs> last last time I said I was playing a bit of cyberpunk, but I've not gone back to it. So that lasted long. Well, then, um, when yeah. that DLC comes out, they're like softly rebooting the entire game. So it might be yeah. worth jumping in when it comes yeah, out. Yeah, we said this before, and that was one of the reasons why I kind of picked it back up again, was in, mm. an, in anticipation of this, 
you know, check, uh, Checkpoint Radio, uh, Cyberpunk like two point mm. So yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'll I'll I'll, I'll keep plugging away at it. But <clears> like my my kind of view of the game has changed a little bit. And fair play to the developers for sort of bringing it back round and kind of fixing it and making it playable. Because I think there are a lot of people now if they're getting into it the first time will really enjoy that game. Mm. So mm. yeah, good for them. Definitely. But yeah, enough about that. Let's uh, move on to the main event, shall we? So, um, before the, this episode, I sent the guys a little brief, and we're going to be doing a studio draft. We're going to draft three uh, studios to your publishing house. You can do this business orientated if you want, if you want to bring in the companies that make the most money, or you can bring in studios to create a game that you've always wanted. Do whatever you want. You've got three blank checks in the mail crack on so Ben can I just say I, I love these little make believe scenarios mm. yeah, they're really fun it was such and a I like to be really creative so, so I'm and then, forward to hearing uh, so score. they've got three we're going three rounds uh, the brief pretty much was pick a name go from there pick a studio and then if you want them to create a game go for it or if you just want them to carry on what they're doing go for it so Ben I will hand over to you okie dokie so I thought long and hard about what games I love, what games I sort of what genres, sorry, that I admire. And if I were to be have my own publishing house, what games would I focus on? Because like you said, if I've got a blank check, I could technically bowl up to anyone and say, like, I'm gonna buy it for whatever money you want. But I was thinking like instead of going super big, mm. I'd kind of go small to medium. Yep. So my publishing house is called Spark. L- true story. I was on my looking at my desk and I saw a piece of paper about um, 120 LED string lights. And on the word was the word Spark. So <laughs> I chose Spark. Um, the ideas so my, could just come from anywhere, can't they, really? Yeah, literally. Mm, That's the whole great. point in like the whole Spark was like bringing ideas to fruition. I am going to put all our logos onto Instagram during ah, the week. Yes. So if you're idea. watching this as well on video, we'll insert some into the video mm-hmm. too, mm-hmm. so you yeah, can see what we're sure. going with. So the first idea is, I don't know, do I say the game first or do I say the company do the, first? Do the studio first. Okay. So I wanted to, I was looking at, the idea of a strategy game. I love strategy games, grew up playing many, many strategy games, playing co-op with my brother and have a real soft spot, even though I don't play as many now as I did back uh, back in the day, but I still love a good strategy game. But I feel like there haven't been many real time, modern to near future strategy games. There are a lot of medieval strategy games. There are a lot of space-themed strategy games. Um, But the old-school classic strategy game, like Command & Conquer, little. Mm. Mm. So I thought, why not bring them back? So Frontier are a studio who are UK-based. They, um, sorry, let me get my slide up about them. Um, Are an independent British game developer and publisher they do it all in house they do both um based in cambridge and founded in 1994 they have extensive experience with strategy focused games such as planet zoo planet coaster jurassic world evolution uh, they've done formula 1 manager and they also made elite dangerous i think that was their birth, their first mm. major sort of big success even though like all the planet coasters and Jurassic World have done solid well. solid library already yeah so. um so they've done few games but they've done them really quite well mm. but they haven't really made any combat focused games apart from an upcoming game called Warhammer Realms of Ruin which is a midi medieval style obviously like the old school Warhammer not the 40k mm. stuff <clears throat> story driven real time strategy but once again it's a medieval style it's not modern day Mm. near future so i think they do an excellent job at maybe introducing a bit of combat into their real-time strategy stuff anyway i kind of spoiled it my idea is to bring command and conquer back from the dead (laughs) yes so i would bring command and conquer back so command and conquer first came out in 1995 so it's 28 years old ish uh, their last major release was Commander Conquer 4, which came out in 2010. There was meant to be a new one, 
kind of like a semi reboot in mm. 2013. It was just going to be called Command and Conquer. It was going to have like a a very early uh, live service model sort of idea. But I think 2013, I don't know, it was maybe a bit risky. EA didn't want it, didn't like it. They had problems with the whole like economy of it all and they dropped it. And it's never, well, they've done a few mobile games here and there, but they've never, or they haven't released another brand new major Command & Conquer title since 2010. So, but I feel like this was a game that, people grew up playing like everyone mm. who played games since the, the the birth of gaming would have played commander conquer especially yeah, yeah. like some of the old red time. alert too is like yeah. the one that i remember playing what a cool Loved memory that, game. that is mm. um so i would do a complete reboot i'd still pay homage to all the iconic characters like you've got kane and all the original themes like where they've got like new resources that are on the planet um but i feel like the legendary name the immense scale that I'm going to try and I'm going to try and achieve the incredible detail will hopefully attract old fans and create new ones. Um, awesome. So I thought of like a semi sort of plot for the story, mm. but I didn't really go much further. So it's the year 2056. I kind of wrote this and didn't read it back <laughs> again. So this is kind of the first time <laughs> I am reading it back. Um, the year is 2056. The first world countries have all come together to fix issues such as pollution, poverty, wastefulness, and energy. However, they left the rest of the world behind, closing all of their borders and communications. So we're talking like UK, America, Australia, you know, all the, and all the other first were France, Germany, blah, blah, blah. Um, the second world countries attempted to keep up and the third world countries were forgotten about entirely. Like, if you literally turned on the news in the year 2056, there would be no talk of any other country that just was, wasn't was keeping up with the, with like the, te mm. the technology race. Um, however, the tables turned... Um, <clears throat> sorry. The tables turned when the second world countries harnessed an immense new power source called Zero Point Energy. It's an actual... <laughs> theory um unobtainium and, yeah yeah literally <laughs> and recruited the third world countries and that's kind of as far as i've got okay. so it's like mm. now it's going to be the, the second and third world countries take trying to like obviously Up, yeah. uprise him yeah kind no. of so, so like america and the uk go around fucking shitting on everyone but yeah, not today they've been not today they, not they're today. now power collect. shift yeah. So that's nice. the idea. So just bring Commander Conquer back from the dead, make it amazingly gorgeous, make it super detailed, have building destruction, have like real um you know when you know when you look at Starfield for instance and you love that aesthetic, that like mm. what they call it NASA punk, have some really cool designs um but keep it classic. Have your resource management, have your base building and uh just bring Commander Conquer back. So that is it. <laughs> First like studio, lot, first game, awesome. Nice. That's a great, great yeah. start. Sorry yeah, for the rambling, Sorry. but I think it will be... I enjoyed I, it. Yeah, I'd yeah. play it. Yeah, I loved play it. Commander yeah, Conquer. I'd play it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very right. nice. So, yeah. James, we head over to you. Right, so <laughs> I'm going to start with the game first, and then I'll tell you like the publisher or the yeah. developer immediately after, because I kind of got a, a mix of two developers that I think could be good for this game, and it's kind of obvious when I say it. So the publishing, like the publisher is called Atlas Publishing, oh, future nice. game development. We want to be at the forefront of technology, <clears throat> big, gorgeous, open worlds, like the best in class performances from the actors portraying the characters, pretty much leading the way in this, in this aspect. So the game I would like to make first and foremost is a Superman game, an open world oh. Superman game. And I would like a combination of team members from Rocksteady and of Insomniac course. to form a new studio to make this Superman game. So in this Superman game, I want there to be like a real big emphasis on the visceral feeling of flight. And mm. I want the flight to be a big aspect of it because Superman, I really feel like um, Man of Steel, for example, for anyone who's watched it, portrayed Superman's power and particularly his flight in such a visceral kind of like, you can feel it through the screen way. Mm. I'd like to portray that to the players who who pick up and play as Superman. They they mm. fly around the planet, fly to 
all these different places. And because of the nature of Superman, how kind of like powerful he is, how powerful his enemies are, this is not just going to be a story told on Earth. It's going to be told on a galactic scale. So it's going to spread oh, wow. across the stars. And just to keep it sort of brief, the general story is is Brainiac is the main antagonist. He's going to go around doing his thing, conquering worlds. I mean, Brainiac is an alien kind of, um, well, super advanced sort of like cybernetic alien who absorbs power and knowledge from all these worlds that he conquers. Um, he discovers the remains of Krypton. Discovers. I know this is kind of breaking law maybe a little bit, but he discovers the remains of Krypton, discovers the last Kryptonian, since Superman is alive, and wants his power and wants to conquer Earth. So makes a beeline for Earth. And then I'd also introduce the Green Lanterns into this studio because I think as the space police, basically what they are, they need to be in this story. They need to know about Mm. Brainiac and they need to race to Earth to find Superman, to tell him that Brainiac's coming to Earth to basically take over the planet. So that's the the premise of the story. In terms of like the gameplay and things like that, like I said, I want a real sort of focus on the flight. And this is where I think Insomniac could be really useful because one of the things they did really well with Spider-Man and Spider-Man Miles Morales was that feeling of you swinging through the city. I thought it was so Mm. well done. And that feeling of speed and the way you could traverse, um, you know, the the, the cityscape so easily as as Spider-Man. So that's why I'd bring kind of them on board. And Rocksteady, I mean, there's there's not much else you can say about Rocksteady. Um, yeah. mm, the that. Batman games are just impeccable. <clears throat> like, they're, they're brilliant. So I think they deserve a shot to kind of, like, lead this project. Um, I thought a little bit about abilities and the way you kind of, like, play the game. Um, mm-hmm. Superman, obviously, we know that he's got loads of power. His power scaling is ridiculous. Um, he's got, like, freeze breath and laser eyes and x-ray vision and things like that. So stuff like freeze breath and, like, his laser eyes would be unlockable kind of like abilities that you can spend XP and stuff on. Um, I thought that maybe his power scaling could also be increased as you spend XP. But one cool feature I, I did think of, which is kind of taking it from the Arkham games, mm. is Superman's X-ray vision could be used as like a puzzle solving tool as well. Mm. So yeah, that could be incorporated idea. into that kind of aspect of the game. And uh, yeah, like I said, a galactic scale story. Maybe you go to other planets that Brainiac has previously sort of conquered to discover how he could stop him. Um, the kind of trail of destruction is left across the universe. And uh, yeah, all of Superman's friends would be in the story. Lois Lane, Jimmy Olsen, obviously you'd have the lanterns in there as well. So it would just be literally just a massive scale, triple A, maybe even quadruple A Superman game where you just basically live out the fantasy of being Superman. You feel the power that he's got. You can fly like him. Like his flight is just going to be so kind of like, gritty and like you can feel him speeding across yeah. the plains of Africa and through the city scapes and like building shake around him as he's tearing through it. So yeah, I really <clears> want to get a sense of like the power of Superman. And that's why I think it needs to be like a galactic scale story because yeah. there aren't many sort of like, I mean, for a game in particular, I know like Lex Luthor, for example, is one of Superman's biggest adversary, maybe his biggest enemy, but for a game, I think you need something like Brainiac or, you know, Dark Side, like these big characters that can challenge him like, on that power level so that when you do get into combat in the game it feels like you're you know matched up against enemies that could potentially beat you mm, yeah. so uh, yeah that would be have... yeah Sorry, he, needs to have that. he needs to have his match doesn't he yeah. exactly exactly mm. <clears throat> and uh yeah that would be that would be my my first game for my my publisher it would it'd have a fucking ridiculously massive budget i'd pour everything <laughs> into it and it would be a big superman game and also i'd have the fortress in there the fortress of solitude that would be kind of like your your hub where you go back to sort mm. of like hone your skills, unlock your skills. You can even like, you know, like in uh, the Arkham games where you can give Batman different suits. He can wear suits from Batman vs Superman. He can wear suits from like all different comics and stuff like that. All of that stuff would be in it. And it would just be a fun kind of open world Superman game. Love and it, that's, that's, that's really awesome. like that. Yeah, I've got very like cool. really like cool memory of playing a Superman game on like PS2. Yeah. Yeah, I, like I really love that game. I'm, I, I, I don't really feel like we've seen a Superman game. Well, that's that's the thing. Like I think it's, we haven't, and I, I feel like a Superman game is so overdue. And I was hoping that Rocksteady would next be working on a Superman game and not Suicide the Suicide Squad game, because I feel like that, especially with you know the new kind of generation of technology and the way um, you know how powerful graphics cards and the new consoles are, we could definitely have like a bigger scale of game. 
Mm. And uh, even like with Spider Man, like the way the way you can swing from one side of the city to the other without loading screens, how fast it is, how quickly everything loads in, that kind of, you know, I, I really feel feel like a Superman game is is long overdue. And uh, yeah, I saw that video of that guy who made a a Superman kind of Unreal thing Engine one. in Unreal Engine five, and it just I was like, yeah, I need I need a Superman game like now. <laughs> Get him on board. Yeah. So yeah, and you've got the two. You've gone and got the two like superhero studios bring exactly together yeah Perfect. Rock Steady and Insomniac like you can't go wrong two great studios awesome, awesome. great start Charles cool. I'll hand over to you thank you so my publisher <laughs> we you've got a lifetime ban for any of my games <laughs> oh okay you'll never <laughs> complete them it. you'll never complete them and I know that that'll rot you to your core so yeah deal with that my OCD <laughs> go on sorry I'm just gonna have to make the next game in whatever title you're playing currently. <laughs> um, no, my studio, uh, my publisher, is going to be called Monday again. Just because oh, no. it's always Monday again. Um, it is always first Monday again. Studio is going to be Playground Games. Ooh. Oh. Going for a you know studio from from England. Great um, studio. Up the Leamington Spa, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> um, they're known, obviously, <clears throat> for their work on the Forza Horizon games, um, and currently are now working on the next instalment of Fable. But I think I'm going to acquire them for their talent in the racing game genre, mm. which leads me on to the plan that I have. I know where this is going. Do you? Do you? Need Maybe. for Speed. No. Oh. <laughs> Burnout. No. Grid. Okay, go on. Give, no. give it to us. All right. I'm gonna Dirt de- Rally. No, I'm going to dethrone both Euro and American Truck Simulator. Oh, We're going bigger and better. <laughs> Anyone that knows me knows Euro Truck Simulator is, is a good game. Um, yeah, so we're going bigger and better. I want incredible graphics, and I'm seeking a one-to-one Full scale world build. Nice. So when I'm hauling Jesus. goods from up north somewhere to Dover to catch a ferry to Europe, I want to be able to dive through my hometown, see what's going on there. You can't Wave do that currently. Parents. Yeah, that's it. Like currently, Euro Truck Simulator, pretty much like motorway for the most part. Mm. It's not that detailed. I want mad detail. And then. I kind of got two games coming off this studio. Mm-hmm. Once the groundwork's laid, like the whole world map is built, then there'll be a brand new street racing IP, which allows players to race anywhere in the world. Okay. You know, if you want to like be a racing, crew. yeah, kind of. Like like if you want to race, better. you know, the rural hills of Japan, no worries. If you want to, then I don't know. Great Wall of China. <laughs> I don't think you can drive on there, but maybe. Uh, yeah, essentially, that is what I want to do. That's a great idea. Games. So it's almost like two games in one because you'd have developed the map for the Euro mm-hmm. Truck, but then you just use that same resource for... Yeah. Mm. Very yeah, nice. That's the plan. So are you saying that it's literally going to take you 11, 12 hours, 10 hours to drive from Edinburgh in a truck to Dover and then a yeah. further 10 hours to get to... I don't know, southern France or whatever, to drop off your goods. Yeah. So you're going to do one mission or one delivery in this game and you've already played the game for 40 hours or like 20 <laughs> hours or 30 yeah. hours or whatever. It's just got... What if it's like a 0. Okay. 0.5 scale? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think uh, a one-to-one may, one scale seems maybe, pretty big. Maybe though. you can choose your scale. Yeah. I, mean, hard mate, I don't know where this technology is being developed or yeah. made, but I'm impressed. I've got a studio for it. I've, I've read my brief and I've got unlimited budget. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so uh, yeah, that's what's nice, going on. Dude. Awesome. Cool. I like we have quite a variety of games at the moment. So, yeah. yeah. yeah let's it's let's very see what, cool. what Connor's got, got up Oops. his sleeve. Mm-hmm. Right. So, I am starting a publishing house called The Foilists. You've got to stay loyal <laughs> to the foil. <laughs> okay, so I've the three I've gone for. I've got one that is business minded, and I've got two that are sort of passion projects. Um, the first one I'm going to go for is I'm going to go for Obsidian, obviously known for um, Grounded, Pentiment, uh, Pillars of Eternity, 
uh, Fallout New Vegas. They've got Outworlds 2 and Avowed in development at the moment. So I'm going to take this studio and put them on the games that they should be working on. They've got incredible ties to the Fallout franchise. Creators of Obsidian made the original Fallout 1 and Fallout 2. So I'd have them on working on a AAA title, which will be a spiritual successor to New Vegas. Nice. Set, it, set it wherever they want, um, do what they want, pretty much. Is it still um, going to be in the Fallout universe? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, they've spoken openly this year that they, um, the lead uh, Obsidian, wants to make another Fallout game before he retires, and they've got a good working relationship with Bethesda. Obviously, they made New Vegas, which they made in like eighteen months. So. I can't imagine what they can do in four to five to six years. Yeah. yeah. And especially in the new creation engine as well. Just give them, because Fallout 5 is going to be 10 years away. So, so is it, wait, it's a quick sidetrack. Isn't Fallout 5 coming after Elder Scrolls 6? Yeah. yeah. And Elder yeah. Scrolls 6 is going to be six years away. Yeah. Yeah. So Fallout 5 is potentially like 15 years away. Man. So next gen. Uh, next, next gen. Yeah. Mm. Uh, at that point and then so you've got the fallout show coming to amazon soon and i'd have this studio making um two fallout titles uh, just to keep fallout in the zeitgeist and then it does work for bethesda they can push that engine to do what they want and then when fallout 5 comes out fallout is still obviously it's going to be highly coveted but they're going to have it's going to have games to keep the fallout fans going so the other title i would would create i would get Obsidian to go back to their roots and it would be a CRPG to think uh, Pillars of Eternity, Tyranny, um, Disco Elysium, that style Fallout game, the isometric point and click. Yeah. Um, lots of text, dice rolls, uh, skill checks and stuff like that. So that will give the old school Fallout fans something that they've been pining for for years. Yeah. And then where it, it all gives, started. Where it all started uh, can be massively in depth give them what they need and then you also get a triple a action rpg fallout game so that would be my f- first studio sweet nice. awesome dude i'm up for that so, I, I, yeah. I i i love obsidian i think they're a great studio mm. me too and anything they make i'll play it and so. the beauty of obsidian as well is whilst they're creating games like avowed and the outworlds 2 and their bigger games they bring out games like pentiment and Grounded, grounded, which come out yeah. to incredible yeah. rave reviews. So they've got so much potential. Um, I would just super talented, super talented, and I would just give them. They want to make Fallout games, and then they can do their passion projects on the side, whether that's uh, follow up to Pentiment, uh, same with grounded, grounded or grounded expansions and stuff. Yeah, grounded expansions, something new. So it allows the studio to do what they want, and then branch off and do small little passion projects with fifteen to twenty people mm-hmm. making the game. So Very nice. I've got a lot of love for Obsidian and they were the first one that came to mind. So wicked. Right then. Very nice. I like it. I so, really like the idea of the um like CRPG Fallout. Mm. I think that would do really good. I, just, I think that yeah. would sell really well. Yeah. There's uh, a massive like fans of that genre and that's where Fallout started. And I think even if it was just a fifteen to twenty hour sort of story. Yeah. It gives the old school fans something to look for, but I'd allow Obsidian to make it as long as you want. Do what you want mm. with it. Yeah, to yeah, make it fall out. Make it yeah. sort of the player driven. Make and it your game. The first mm. thing I would do as well is that I think three or four writers um, that did New Vegas left. Um, I would bring those guys back if bring they wanted back. to come back. Um, yeah. And then bring in people that were from the original Fallout, if they're still about, and just get it. Give the core Fallout fans what they want, and and then obviously you get New Vegas uh, or the spiritual successor wherever they want to put it. So yeah, awesome, right? Very so, cool. Very cool. Nice, dude. Um, ben, we're going to go back to you. So, game number two. Now this was kind of like an idea that I had just from a picture, but <laughs> my next game would be a Limbo slash Inside. If you've played it, you'll know what I mean. It's like a platformer, side-scrolling. You sort of discover the story as you go on. Um, Sort of, it's, the game is visually, the games are both very visually 
like mysterious and dark and the focus is on what you want to see but then where it is a platformer like Ori in the Blind Forest for instance the depth that you get is is just amazing but I feel like Limbo and Inside were excellent um they were made by a company called Playdead a Dutch company so I would buy Playdead or get them to make me a Death Stranding inspired Limbo Mm. so that's imagine, a great idea yeah I, would, I, think, I think that's really cool because as well like with the amount of like walking you do in dev strand exactly you can imagine like the endless sort of like side to side yeah. scrolling and can, can you ducking imagine like, down as like the bts are sort of like appearing yeah, above you it would be stuff. fucking sick um, like, that'd be really cool yeah, yeah. That's awesome, dude. like imagine when like i can imagine at the beginning of the game when you're like leaving i can't remember any of the names or anything in dev stranding now but you come out of like the facility <clears> and you're out into the green wastes and the camera light like, zooms all the way out and you're like this tiny little dude and then you see just how far and barren everything is and then it kind of the camera sl- slowly zooms back in and you hit your first like objective you decide what you want to carry what you want to drop off what you want to uh, upgrade equip unequip you know what i mean everything like that and then just keep progressing on and it's just going to be a death stranding inspired limbo i think that would be an excellent game and i would play the bollocks off of that i would play yeah. that <laughs> so much um i did flesh it out a little bit but i basically just said what i just said now the stunning visuals of the death standing landscape the empty road ahead with lots of landmarks and vistas and um so on deciding what to take and leave the range of different enemies like i didn't even think about the bts overhead and like the game would obviously make you move in a certain way where you're hiding behind a, a rock and you'll be mm. clicking what, in the background. Not what I like about yeah. this is, is obviously it's like a platform like Limbo, but there is like roguelike elements to it. You have to choose mm. what you take and what you leave and yeah. whilst you're doing on these rounds. I think that's a brilliant idea, dude. Yeah, and then really when you do. die and then like you'll go... Uh, oh, can you... Uh, sorry, I'm getting all caught up. When you die or, or you're on the brink of death, and it all goes black, and the goo comes out, mm-hmm. and the big fuck, and it could almost be it would break the um the two D. I know it's like a two D, three D. That's what it's they like are. Two point five D. Yeah, that's what they call it. But then I could imagine, for instance, that when you maybe fight like a big, is it a BT, the big black things. You know, like the big dolphin. Oh, I don't know what they're called, but the, the BTs yeah. are the things that leave like the handprints and stuff. And oh, like, yeah, uh, yeah, that's what I mean. They're like the, the people that are like kind of floating around and, you know. Yeah, but uh, I can imagine that when you're entering combat with one of those, for instance, instead of the game being side to side for a moment, you would still be playing side to side, but the focus would be on fighting into the game if you know what i mean oh yeah. so you'll be walking across and then for instance you get into some beef you get spotted and a big bt gets alerted you would then be fighting forwards and then like taking cover left and right and shooting and so on and so on yeah. um and then like having the huge bt figure in the distance and the mm. the floating people i just think it would be so good like really atmospheric as well yeah really atmospheric mm. of course hideo kojima is take whatever money you want and <laughs> he'd be hopefully completely behind it i feel like play dead have absolutely nailed it with that format so i wouldn't go anywhere else there are many side scrolling platformers that are are excellent mm-hmm. but i feel like games like limbo and inside really left the mark because they made games that no one was asking for and made them fucking amazing but then so, everyone loved them. What yeah. is great is as well with Death Stranding, there's such a great atmosphere and you think of Limbo and you think of Inside and it's atmospheric. Yeah. Not much is said. No. Nothing's really said yeah, at no, all. Yeah, no, yeah. Kind but of... you, you, visual storytelling, they're brilliant at it. I yeah, think yeah. so awesome, dude. that was, that was uh, as soon as I kind of thought of it, and I'll tell you what, the, the picture that inspired me was actually on the Play Dead website. So they're advertising for positions for their next project, but the picture of their next project did kind of look quite um, space sort of themed. And the picture that they used was like landscape. And as mm. soon as I saw it, I was like, just imagine if it was Death Stranding theme. I know it's not Death Stranding theme, but I feel like the actual core Death Stranding plus the Limbo game 
would be mm. an amazing matchup. So yeah, awesome. that's yeah. I like, I like yeah. that a lot, man. Yeah. yeah, I feel like the Death Stranding cool. universe has got like a lot to be explored as well, and mm. uh, another a, 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 another game in that universe, but that's in a completely different style, would be really interesting to have. Mm. Awesome, glad you like it. Love right. it. We're heading back to you, James. Right, so this game is going to be nice and short and sweet, but this is kind of like when we talk about our. Uh, is a game going to be like a pres- a passion project? Is a project going to be like business orientated? Mm. This is a game that I love, but for me would be something that would be very business driven for Atlas Publishing. So I would like to hire, well, I'd like to buy Respawn yep. and get them nice. to make a black remake. Oh yeah. With mm. a full multiplayer component with all the season passes and everything mm. like that. And that would be, my um my uh, cod competitor the only mm. difference i would make is like i would like them to make the game look graphically more realistic than like apex legends does for yeah. example apex is a gorgeous game but yeah. i want that realism because i'd want the game to be the opposite to cod in a lot of ways not sort of like this arcadey jumping and sliding around bollocks but something that's a bit grittier a bit more grounded a bit more heavy in your movements you know you can't sprint for too long because your stamina runs out but something that's like really sort of like a the guns have got a lot of kick and feel to them, a lot mm. of feedback, slower mm. pace. Like I think of, I know it's not a first person shooter, but I always think of Metal Gear Solid 5 because that game just feels so good when you're mm. playing it, you know, mm. like the way Snake runs around and like attacks people and shoots guns. And everything. Like even the cars, the way they drive is so kind of like heavy and, and sluggish, but not in like a slow way in like a, this feels real kind of way. Yeah, it's heavy. Yeah, but even so, like when you you sprint as snake, you're moving quickly, but it feels like you're actually moving. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so I'd like to have that kind of realistic style to to the gunplay and the gameplay. Yeah, full black remake, black like such an iconic game for me personally. Um, redo the whole story and everything, like um, j- keep the sort of premise of the story the same, but full on sort of like animated cutscenes and cinematics and stuff, like full CG and everything. I like, make it a real sort of like oh, that's what COD's done. Okay, so we're going to try and like do our own version of, of what you've done, but we're not going to upset all the, the players and, and piss them off by adding bullshit into the game that no one wants. Yeah, That's basically what mm. I want to do with it. And awesome. uh, yeah, full, a full multiplayer cool. suite, 6v6 game modes, 12v12, like larger game modes, no battle royale, but I definitely yeah. like, because I would prefer it, because I always, when I whenever I play uh, Modern Warfare 2 now, I just feel like I need more from the traditional multiplayer game uh, game mode. Mm. I'm sick of seeing all these ridiculously shitty updates to Warzone. I want updates for the multiplayer component because I love that side of the game. I still think yeah. that that yeah. side of the game has got a lot to offer. But, you know, being the way that Warzone is, the amount of money it earns, yeah, Activision don't care about that. They don't yeah. care. They just they would just rather just pump money into Warzone because it's free to play and everything they earn from it is all profit pretty much. So, um... So yeah, that's that's what I'd do. That would be my second game, a remake from uh, Respawn. I'd get them into I like that. that. I yeah, I think that's great. It's the right I think studio. Still, yeah, yeah, I was going to say. Yeah. I think just proper, like, job. nothing complicated. Just a really well-made, well-developed, fun-to-play, mm. good shooter. A military see, shooter that can compete with Call of Duty. Even with Apex, I see Apex is, like, that IP should be bigger than it is, like, the the way that they treat the law and like the cinematics yeah. and, so, and it's the right studio because I think they would, could make black. Obviously black's going to bring people back in because of the name and like the love for it, but that could be huge IP. Yeah. And I think respawn are the perfect sort of studio to helm that. Yeah. Awesome dude. I think that's a great decision. Mm. Yeah. Thank it. you. Very nice. And then Very good. Charles. So then my next one is definitely a passion project. You are um, trunk simulator 10. <laughs> <laughs> no space truck sim <laughs> no no it's, it's not the one no i actually it's a game that i spoke about on a previous episode when we talked about our fancy reboots mm. golden axe it is golden axe yeah boy. and yeah i think i think as well i'll discuss this but i think the perfect studio for this and the studio that i would acquire is cd project red nice yes. and i'll have a fantasy game that's it. They'll be bringing my co-op RPG to fruition. So yeah. very cool. How yeah. would it be? Would it be like which? Yeah, give us a, give us I mean? give us a quick recap of of Golden Axe and like what you do to it. Because I know we talked mm. about it before in a previous episode. We did, yeah. 
Um, so essentially, Golden Axe, um, there's a central villain called Death Adder, who was pretty much fucked off every of every one of the main characters in in Golden Axe. So he will still be the villain. Um, but what I'd like to make is like a massive open world RPG with lots of ex- um, exploration, a really rich story, um, lots of quests, and it will all be based in the original lore of the games. Um, along the way, you'll you have to like discover new abilities, learn how to use your spells, and forge weapons, and it's sort of, there's beasts as well that you can ride. And I just think this game. I'd have it made in Unreal Engine 5. Nice. And I just lovely. think that... Yeah. My favourite thing from your pitch from Golden Axe is the jump in, jump out multiplayer, which mm. is like, you you can go and play your own single player game and then you can jump in with your friends and you'll still have your character and your abilities and stuff like that. Yeah. And I think yeah, the yeah. that the RPG scene is severely missing that. Like, uh, the amount of times, like... I'd love to jump into like Ben save on the game that we're playing at the same time. Just even just have a look around and see what you're doing. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, like with that as well, I'd have it so the difficulty scales depending on, you know, if you're a massively higher level, mm. it will scale up. And yeah, I think it just, it could, they could bring the game back and that's what I'd be doing with them. It's, it's the right That'd studio as well. Cool. Like their, even their side missions are better than most main missions for a lot of games like the law their attention to detail like the dlc like me and james talk about it all the time like blood and wine that game is that could be a game by itself yeah it really could be so mm. uh, yeah uh, awesome choice dude oh uh, yeah very cool i'm getting yeah, like monster it. hunter vibes mixed with yeah obviously witcher mixed with some mmo that's in the back of my mind like elder scrolls online or something yeah but also i want like the, ex- <clears throat> the emphasis on just exploration and like fishing. It will have fishing. It will definitely yeah, have fishing. Good. Game of the year. Game of the year contender <laughs> straight away. It's got fishing in it. Done and done. But yeah, that's that's my sweet passion Charlie. project. Awesome, dude. Yeah, very, very nice. nice. And I love that's that you're like you and James remain loyal to those games. Like James yeah. brings Black up as much as possible. <laughs> you bring Black. up Golden X. Yeah, I like that a lot. <laughs> so this is my business decision, um, but it's also just my love for the studio, I would acquire Bungie. Um, I think I've got Obsidian and the next studio will be a, a smaller size studio. I have to look at the brass tax things. So I need someone to make some money and <laughs> Bungie do that. Um, they're the live service kings for a reason. You see games come out now that are still echoing Destiny, even if it's just by UI design. Um, they're at the forefront of a lot of things in the industry and rightfully so the studio's huge now uh, Destiny looks like it's winding down story wise but obviously that will still be there in the background uh, Marathon is on the horizon and they've got a game called Matter coming out in 2025 according to leaks from the FTC trial so I would just let Bungie do what Bungie do it's um, not much to do really uh, I enjoy every game that they create and I would just want to put more out. I'd also allow them to go and do consultancy like they're doing with Sony. Just allow them to do what they do. If they want to grow, if they want to go and do a small little thing, they want to go, right, uh, this will be exclusive on here. Just let Bungie be Bungie. Uh, take yeah. the reins off. Um, I think Activision severely hampered them with uh, releasing things too early, sort of milking the cash cow. And yeah. you see Destiny, the original one was undercooked. I don't really think they got to what Destiny needed to be until probably about halfway through Destiny 2. Uh, the servers aren't big enough for Destiny 2. That's why the content keeps getting released. So I would just pump some money into them. How big do you need your servers? Yeah. What do you need for this? What do you need for that? And just let them go mm. and make the quadruple A games that I think they're capable of doing. Um, yeah, so it's really simple, but I just, I love that studio and I'm just, be there for the ride awesome so, very cool it's a great like business that. choice and it have a live action mm. game on the books mm. that, can, that can generate a constant stream of income so and also i think um destiny's going to be going to like a live action series and stuff like that so i would let them push the bound if they want to go and create an anime 
or a live action show or whatever. Just mm. let them go and be as creative as possible. Awesome. And take the reins off. So um, we we're already back to you, Ben. Well, hey, that was quick. Mm. Last game. So here we go. <clears throat> I wrote my thing with the game first, but I think I'm going to start with the studio first. So the dev I'm picking for my last game for my publishing house, would be 11-Bit Studios, Ooh. the developers behind Frostpunk, This War of Mine. Um, obviously, they're making Frostpunk 2. Uh, they just do amazing... I, I don't know really what the genre is, but they do, like, for instance, like Frostpunk dis- is like a society. It's like dystopian stuff, isn't it? It's like yeah. apocalyptic sort of That's end of world it. stuff. So... But it's more like the managing of resources and people. Like for instance, Frostpunk is you're managing a very small society of people and may, literally deciding who lives, who dies, who, what new laws to, to do to, mm-hmm. for the better of the whole camp. And you've got This War of Mine, which, is, which came out obviously years before Frostpunk, but it's kind of a similar, you're just a few people, you start off with three people, you're struggling in a war-torn city and you need to manage your resources and make uh, manage the old people and fight and defend and so on and so on so my last game idea would be a witcher inspired life sim in the times though where the witch schools were at their peak so obviously in the witcher 3 you go to the school of the wolf and it's in absolute disarray they seem to not be training anybody it seems that the days of the witcher school are numbered and the best days are way behind them so I'd want to go back into the Witcher universe when these schools would have been at their peak and thriving. And and even though the stigma of a Witcher may have still be bad back then, like it is in the Witcher games and books, mm. but I'd want to go back to when the Witcher schools were, the, bit, the castle was not in disarray and everything was great and they were training kids and so on and so on. Okay. But I'd want it to be like a life sim, so similar to games like, um, well, similar to Frostpunk where you're managing the resources, similar to like Stardew Valley where you're choosing what to put and where. So this are, you literally, mine. are you literally managing the school? Like the yeah, Witcher you're school? kind of okay. managing the school and like you're this. upgrading your facilities, you're sending witches out on <clears throat> contracts, you're dealing with the global politics of the region. Yeah. You're countering raids against peasants who want to see you all dead. You're like you're, Crusader Kings, but in the Witcher. World. Yeah, exactly. Oh, nice. But it's focused on your school, and then I think like they'd focus on obviously the School of the Wolf, but then maybe as the game gets bigger and it might be DLC, and obviously mm. got to find some way to monetize it in the future. Maybe you can do the School of the Cat, School of the Griffin, and go so on and so mm. on. Yeah, yeah. And you'll be obviously managing the whole school. No, I'm not talking like, you know, that hospital management where you're like mm. working out everyone's pay and shit. I'm <laughs> just talking about like it's getting resources. Yeah, doing some trading, dealing, uh, teaching up the young kids and all of the Witcher lore. And you are sort of, you're almost Vesemir managing this school. Mm. Um, and it's like that top down, but it's not too top down it's almost like a divinity if you know mm. what i mean yeah, where yeah, it's yeah. that isometric, isometric it's very gorgeous yeah. and 3d and then i'd have the combat i wasn't entirely <laughs> confident well i had two ideas of how the combat could work and maybe they could both be introduced so the first one would be if i have a massive massive budget i would have so obviously i want the game to have some form of excitement i don't want it to be all management mm. so if you do send witches out on a contract to deal with a griffin in the local area i'd want then the game to literally be the witcher you are the witcher that you sent out on this mission with all of the control and abilities and visuals that you'd play if uh, that you get when you play the witcher 3 for instance but obviously your witcher will be specked out with the gear that you've sent them on from the score so if you've okay. got the bronze swords and you haven't got a crossbow and you haven't got you you know what I mean you're quite under equipped because you're still early on in the game but you would you can control your witcher agent if you like just like you would do playing the witcher or we I have would a hybrid have, then. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or I would keep it more strategy focused 
and I'd have it like XCOM or Civilizations okay. when you're moving um, on a Use grid and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's turn based. I, I think that mm. first one's a really good idea though. Cause, yeah, um, there's a game. I think it's called Moonlighter. And it's a small sort of uh, indie game, but you run a shop during the day and then in the evening you go on runs like a roguelike. All right. And then you go through and then you kill things and get resources and that. But that's like you can go on runs with which I think that's yeah, exactly. a cool idea, dude. Yeah. You don't so really I, see it in strategy games. No. And I can imagine like the wall gets breached, you need to patch it up and but then yeah. that's wood and brick that you need to then make your weapon, your, I don't know, your blacksmith's and they need, you know what I mean? All the management stuff, send people out on, on, um, contracts. And, uh, yeah, I think it would be really cool. I'd definitely play that. That's very cool. So, I, like the, I like the idea of having that, um, combat and action in it. Cause sometimes like strategy games and like, you know, games like that are fun, but sometimes they, they lack a little bit of, you know, edge to them because you yeah. don't get to witness like the, uh, the actual... those battles and those fights like you literally just going click here click there click there there was an amazing game years ago just remind i just remembered it can't think of the name right now it was a roman themed um or greek themed strategy game and you had a hero and you had all your troops it was like age of empires but mm. you could then go down and become the hero so you would send oh, cool. your hundreds of troops to go and fight just like a normal age of empires you could then take control of your hero unit and just fight like a third person hack and slash. It was such a good idea. Yeah, you, um, you never see that. No, you never really see no. that anymore. So that's that's really no. cool. That's something that you know I'd be interested and in. And what I love about this as well, Charlie then gets a check off of you. There's already business going on between Charlie and CD <laughs> Project Red. Oh yeah. Oh fuck that. Oh, my it. pockets. It's not the Witcher anymore. It's out. Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, quick well. question about that, Ben. Um, Go on, mate. Is Gwent involved in this game in some way? Yeah, because I feel like it has to be. Yeah, definitely. You could. Annual I think Gwent you'd... tournament. Yeah, you could have a school. Gwent tournament. But that's why I feel like you'd have the freedom to like place like a Gwent table for your uh, Witcher witches yeah, for your, for your students. to 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 chill and rest in the evening. But then, if you as a player want, you clicked on that table, you could then play Gwent if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And if you oh, wanted cool. to go to the uh, to the, um, I was going to say shooting range, but you know what I mean? The <laughs> fucking training place. Training, yeah. You could then play like you were playing The Witcher and walk around oh, the school wicked. that you've built. Yeah, love yeah, it. Yeah, that'd be really cool. Mm -hmm. Could that be how you train your units? Could you yeah, do the training yourself? It would be both, yeah. So you'd set your Witcher to go and train and then you could also take control and train, if you know what I mean. If we're going with that first form of combat where you play it like you're playing the Witcher. Yeah, yeah. I suppose you could do it a bit like FIFA. You can simulate the training and they get like, I don't know, a yeah. big minus. It would be like you the do Sims. the training yourself yeah. and yeah. then get an A. Get like a. Yeah. Maybe that's a better way to phrase it. It'd be like a Sims version of the Witcher in a way. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You cool. Get nice. the American guy that voices Dandelion in the cutscenes as the narrator. That'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> Eleven bit were on my shortlist, so I'm glad they Ooh, got it. Yeah, Eleven bit are great. Ooh. I was playing this war of mine today because I never really gave it a cut. It is hmm. difficult. It's not easy. Right, so we make our way around to James for your final pick. So for my final my final pick. Um so I don't really like this this game is not sort of based off anything in particular, but there's a mechanic to this game that I would love to explore. Mm. But the game would be like almost like a smaller sort of double A game and it would be like a walking sim similar to like Life is Strange or What Remains of Edith Finch. Think like a Telltale game. Yep. Mm -hmm. So Telltale would be the studio that I would acquire. And I'd like to get them to make a Jack the Ripper inspired oh. detective story. Ooh. Like mm. set in like the late 19th century. Um, a psychological thriller, kind of maybe even Lovecraftian inspired in, in some sort of uh, aspects. Um, I thought of True Detective and The Sinking City as two sort of points of reference for this story and like the atmosphere and the vibe. So the main thing is, is like you're investigating like a series of murders. That's why I say it's like Jack the Ripper inspired. Mm. Um, but the, the, the kind of key thing to this game is, is uh, you gather 
evidence from these crime scenes and then like you can assemble them across like a board or a table at your office or your home or wherever you are and uh, you can piece start to piece pieces together and you might be able to get like a partial link between two pieces or a strong link between two pieces or like a weak link and uh, you can get like pieces of evidence that you, you sort of put together and you could maybe present that to like the station or your sort of commanding officer mm. and uh, you can earn sort of like trust and credibility from bringing pieces of evidence that make sense in the investigation no. versus things that don't make sense where you lose credibility and lose trust for your commanding officer, uh, commanding officer. And the point of this is, is that um you have to kind of tread a line between going down the correct route of investigating a crime versus unorthodox really? methods to get Dirty evidence copper. that is strong, but it's questionable of like how you obtained it, why it fits into this crime or whatever. I'm not really too sure like how this will sort of work, but I had kind of had this idea that it's all about like influencing the sort of world around you and the people around you making connections with like, the morticians down at the mortuary or like the politicians in the area and like finding out what people know and having like an element of trust or honor sort of embedded into it, but all sort of like on the backdrop of a telltale told story. So it's literally like, there's no combat or anything like that. You just walk into places, you're investigating and it's basically a puzzle game. Mm. So that would be like my small sort of double A kind of like almost a passion project for these people um you can make this really interesting detective style game where the evidence you gather like there's a lot of evidence that you can gather from these crime scenes some of it's you good some misguiding. Of it's bad. exactly you can get misguided misguided evidence and you know maybe the main character's got some of his own problems like a lot of weary sort of world weary detectives have maybe he's just come back from what war was the Crimean war or something he's seen some shit he's done some things he's messed up and he's kind of doubted himself and his psychological sort of behavior kind of like interferes with the way he investigates and the things he sees the way he can piece things together so uh, yeah it's kind of a loose explanation I know it doesn't really make too much sense no it does that's sort of like the idea I think that's a great treatment I sort of uh, had for this for this game yeah just a really in-depth character driven um detective story that is all about piecing together evidence you know it's funny that you mentioned uh fifa actually charlie because i was thinking about the chemistry in ultimate team as to how this evidence works so if you get evidence that's like circumstantial for example the link might be weak or red but Mm. if you get evidence that's sort of like oh maybe some person said they saw like a tall mysterious figure leaving this area at this time but then someone unrelated to them said they saw the same thing then you can piece that together Mm. and you can maybe create like a route that this person might have walked along the night of that crime, for example. Then you can present that. Like an L.A. Noir. Exactly. I was getting like... Meets Telltale, yeah. I was getting like L.A. Noir and then like Luther sort of vibes. Yeah. Yeah. And then you can like present that evidence to, you know, the person who's the lead on this case or like the person at the station and, 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 and they can kind of like trust you or begin to doubt you if it's not good or if you sort of like not getting the right thing from from the, the the evidence or the people that you're sort of questioning and then it opens Very up cool. a little bit where people can be um sort of open to you helping them with stuff or asking them questions about things or closed off if they don't trust you mm. so yeah but a little mix of like different mechanics going on but i feel like there's maybe something there and yeah, that would yeah. be my small that's budget game cool. I think that's a great treatment for a game. Um, there's not enough like you've got the sherlock holmes games which i think are meant to be quite good but there's no really massive detective sort of games like L.A. Noir come out and it sort of came and went. Yeah. So Sinking City as well, like which you mentioned. But yeah, I think there's there's definitely a market for that. And Telltale of their writing's unbelievable. Like, yeah, one line goes through all the way throughout the game. Yeah. Like the way that they have multiple endings and different mm. quests. Like, yeah, I think that's yeah. A, and I was, I was thinking a little idea. bit about um, is it Super Massive Games who make Until Dawn and is it Super mm. Massive Games. Or super giant games, it's super one, massive. One yeah, yeah. So they make the Until Dawn games and you know the the Quarry and those kind of like sort of cinematic branching story games. So mm. yeah, yeah. That that would be my my third game. Nice. And then Charlie, we make our way back to you. So I've gone with a big a, a big studio. I've gone with Rockstar San Diego, Ooh. and. Obviously, they've undoubtedly developed one of the biggest, best franchises we've ever seen with Red Dead. So, I think they're. I'm keen to have them on my S- roster. Safe bet. 
Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say that. I've done It'll some be things. ten years before you see a game, but yeah, safe yeah. bet. <sighs> no, I've got loads of money. It's fine. Yeah, Hire more people. <laughs> exactly. Um, I'm going to create a new franchise, Ooh. and I'm going to be kind of digging my elbows into the ribs of Ubisoft. Nice. It's kind of going to it's going to rival Assassin's Creed. Nice. And it's going to be called Origins of the Blood. Ooh. Essentially, Ooh. it's a series that will follow the bloodline of well, a you. certain bloodline <laughs> through different <laughs> historical <laughs> eras. Yeah, and my idea for this came from thinking that I was just imagining Red Dead Two or Red Dead, but set in like pirate times. Mm. Okay, and I yeah. really want to see that. And then I yeah. kind of thought, well, how can I turn this into a franchise? And I think. You'll follow the bloodline, and uh, yeah. Will there be some like storytelling? Will it be like animus tech? Will we be like in the present day, at like going back into the past, like what Assassin's Creed does, or is the whole game going to be set in? You'll be going into the Flanimus. The Flanimus. (laughs) Into Um, the No, yeah, I kind of need to figure that out whether or not. We'll be toeing the line. Yeah, because if it's like following the blood, is that yeah. are we going back through people's genes and? Yeah. Well, I'll, maybe I'll, I'll start at the other end. We'll start at the way back. Oh, okay. And then, wait, 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 and then forward. the bloodline goes forward. I see. I've never yeah. thought of Rockstar making Black Flag, but now I want it. Yeah. Well, this is the thing. Just... Like the the thing about <clears throat> Rockstar is like I always think to myself, what if Rockstar made a science fiction RPG? Yeah. What would that look like? No doubt we would look incredible. What if Rockstar made a first person shooter? Yeah. Like just something completely it's... random that they've not made before. What if they what if they made a version of Black Flag? I'm sure it'd be great. Like I'd I love to see the that. way that they've nailed like the eighteen hundreds. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how could they go wrong do it? Like we've not really seen other than Black Flag, which hmm, like we've not seen a really decent pirate game. Like Sea of Thieves is good, but it's not the realism that I want. It's, yeah. it's the arcade category, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, What's yeah, the yeah. new I'm, one coming out? Called? In the it's research for this... Uh, uh, Skull and Bones, mate. That's Skull yeah, I looked at that and I, I was expecting it... No, no, I was expecting it to be like quite... Like, oh, it's going to be a almost a bit more realistic park. No, no it, it looks cartoony. It, it's the I don't want it. with Ubisoft is if, if they took Assassin's Creed and they, they created it like with the realism in mind, I think those games would be so much better. And I'm not always I like we played that Exo Primal uh, during the week, and like I like games that are just games. They know what they are, like a bit of fun. Mm, yeah, a bit but, of mindless yeah, fun. Yeah, but I'd l- like a realistic pirate game with like Rockstar at the helm and like the motion capture and their attention to detail yeah. and like slowing down the pace to suit the time. Yeah, oh, mate, I'm in. Like, yeah, easy win. I'd say we could yeah. follow Arthur Morgan's bloodline, but yeah. <laughs> we all know the end of Red Dead. Maybe he's got a illegitimate son. Yeah, we could go back to his to his, his ancestors. I just think he's granddad. Know, you, you you know you'll be in in a port and then you can like build your own crew, like recruit people and like yeah. you can join Blackbeard's gang and he can be the fucking antagonist. Yeah. And then Johnny Depp comes along. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that'd be yeah. Cool. That's, uh... <laughs> <laughs> putting that's, rock, that's... putting Rockstar in another kind of like, you know, world would be. I think anyone would be interested in that. Yeah, mm. yeah. yeah, love it. Awesome, awesome. awesome. Very nice. Right. I think we want our last <clears throat> game now of the night. Yeah. Wing. So this is. Uh, I've gone for a smaller studio, and it's a studio that I've been a fan for a while. Um, it's Super Giant Games, dating back to Bastion, which I think is a fantastic mm. game. Transistor. Pyre, which it was okay, um, but obviously Hades come out as a smash hit, and then they've got the follow up Hades too. Um, and I, I played I, Transistor the other day actually. Just yeah, it's mm, a good game. I played Bastion a few months ago actually. Just jumped mm. back into it, but um, I would just allow them to be as creative if they want. They've got such a small studio. I think uh, Hades was the biggest, and they only had like twenty, twenty three people or something working on that game. And then they've just given them some financial freedom. Uh, Hades was like an epic store exclusive for a long time. I would just take that away. But what you need, they've got such a great 
writing staff. Um, Hades is one of the best games I've ever played. Hades and is a you, phenomenal game. And you look mm. at it and it's just a simplistic sort of roguelike, but the writing... It's the extra effort, isn't it? The narration, yeah. the art style. I just the think extra that's, 10% just goes so far. The studio's mm. got so much potential and I, I wouldn't even get in their way. It's just like, you want to make Hades 3 after 2? Go for it. If not, go and do what you want. Be as creative as possible. And I'm very shocked that... A, a publisher hasn't come in and purchased Supergiant, but maybe that's the way they want it. They want to remain independent, but yeah. yeah, I would just have the deal similar to what Bungie has with like um, PlayStation and what um, Bethesda have with uh, Xbox. It's like mm. I'll fund you, but you can work independently. Yeah. I'm not going to sit there and tell you what to do. I'll back you, and then if you want to make games just for PlayStation or just for Xbox or even just for the Switch, whatever you do, what you want to do. Just fund them, allow them to create. Because I do think, like, Bastion Chances to Pyre and then Hades, like, four games that they've created. Like, what a library of games they've got already. So, allow them to grow if they want to grow, if they want to stay small and somewhat independent, go for it. But I just, I love that studio and that would be my final sort of passion pick. Yeah. Just allow them to create. Right. So... That brings us to the end of our draft. Very cool. What an all excellent... Some solid picks. I want to play yeah. all these games. Yeah, yeah I do. And there was no, like, we spoke, like, to look behind the curtain. We was thinking, like, what happens if we pick the same studios? And it was a concern of mine going in. And 11-bit studios was on my shortlist, Ben. Were they? Yeah. yeah. I mean, they were picks, like, quite different, different studios and, like, different games as well. Like, mm. loads of different styles of different games. So it's yeah. cool. Bit of variety Maybe we there. become a conglomerate and then we yeah. have yeah. all these games. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be bought out by uh, who's that um, Embracer Group? We'll be bought Embracer. out by oh, yeah. someone anyway. Anymore. So. Uh, Tencent, it'll probably yeah. be. Sweet. Right. <laughs> so before we finish, is there anyone that had like, I don't know, an honorable mention? Anything to think of? I'll, uh, I, think I was like, I, I, well, I was just going to say, just reiterating what I said earlier, like, I would love to see Rockstar do something completely out of the mm. sort of norm for them. Yeah, that's that, that. That I did originally think about choosing Rockstar, but I thought maybe mm. it might be a little bit too sort of obvious in some ways. But um, putting them in like a random scenario and saying, "Can you make this game that's like mm. super far, like removed from anything you've made before?" Just see what they come up with. Mm. Yeah, that's, I, I had an that. idea of um, so War Thunder do what they do best. Like, there's no one who challenges them in their field. If you know what I mean, they mm. do vehicular combat at a simulator level with gorgeous graphics with literally real world physics and they do an excellent job and they've managed to keep their play account even in like the times where war thunder was not even on people's radar the, the anyway mm. war thunder's a great game has always got my respect i would like to see like a strat i know most of my games are strategy themed but could you imagine what like a strategy themed World War II company of heroes esque made by Gaijin um War Thunder strategy uh, game. Yeah. Like a uh, Steel Commander or a Yeah yeah. What's the other one called? I can't remember what it's called now. But yeah, that was just another one that I thought it was one of the first ones that came to my mind. But when I thought of the other three I was like, no, that's definitely fourth place. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Charlie, Sweet. did you think of anything? Or they, they, um, what, what, your picks they were, were your picks. No, they were my main. That's bit, my betting main everything picks. on those ones. That's it. Yeah. Mm, that's, the only yeah. other one I had was I was going to take Pro Evo off of Konami and create like a FIFA killer, but I couldn't pin Pro Evo to a studio. I just didn't know where to put them. So, yeah. Mm. So I sort of walked away. So, right then. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. And Connor, Rockstar. One ex- yeah. <laughs> you make a football I'd game. fucking play Can it. Can you make a football game? <laughs> <laughs> It'd be the best football story you've ever seen. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, awesome um, brief, I suppose. Really yeah. good. Got yeah, very cool. Yeah. Right then. So, I enjoyed it. It's a lot of fun. It's good to see how you would run a business. So like, mm. obviously, what sort of studios are close to your heart or what passion products you'd enjoy. So, yeah, it's a fun exercise. <laughs> Well, that was a fun episode. It's always good to fantasize about our dream games. Uh, We hope you guys enjoyed it as much as we did. And if you did enjoy it, then why not get involved in the comments on our social pages on YouTube or even join our Discord and carry on the conversation there. Let us know how you build your own fantasy video game publisher. You can access all that stuff by clicking the link in the description of this episode. 
Thank you for listening. My name is James. I'm Ben. I'm Connor. And I'm Charlie. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. See ya.